Pike are a fearsome freshwater predator that can be found in waters across the globe. They thrive in cooler climates such as Northern Europe and Canada and can grow to immense sizes. The biggest pike in the world caught by an angler is claimed to have been a little over 58 pounds. It was caught in the Czech Republic and it was measured in at 133 centimeters. The size that these fish grow along with their impressive colors and markings make pike a popular target for anglers all across the world. If you want to learn how to catch pike, then stick around for a full in-depth guide. First, let's look at location. Where are you likely to find a pike? Pike live in lakes, rivers and canals, but what determines their success is the amount of prey they have to feed on. Waters like stocked trout reservoirs are known hotspots for big pike, as these places have a constant supply of trout coming in, which means the pike have loads of food to feed on. As a general rule, if there's lots of bait fish in the water, then there's also likely to be a healthy population of pike too. Pike, like most predators, will wait in ambush near structure on the lake or riverbed. Things to look for are marginal drop-offs where the bank slopes away into deeper water, overhanging trees, they'll often be sat under them, and also man-made structures such as weirs and bridges. If you can find some structure, then it's worth dropping a line in. On rivers, you'll also need to think about the flow. We've caught most of our pike fishing in slacks or on the crease line where the fast water meets the slow water. Pike aren't going to want to be sat mid-flow because they're going to use a lot of energy swimming against that fast water. So they'll sit normally in the slack water waiting for some prey fish to swim into the wrong place before they attack. There's a number of tactics and approaches to use for pike fishing, and in this video we're going to look at our favourite and most used methods, float fishing with live and dead baits, and also lure fishing. To tie a simple float rig, you will need the following items. An inline float, this is a 24 gram model, but they are available in other sizes. A 15 to 20 gram inline sliding weight, this will cock the float upright, but not pull it under. A float stop, soft plastic bead and a strong swivel. Some strong wire trace material like this. Two treble hooks. The size of your hooks depends on the size of the bait you're using but a good starting point is a size 6. And lastly you'll need some wire cutters and forceps. Also it's worth mentioning that you need a strong mainline. We like to use a 30 pound braid. Firstly, take the two sets of treble hooks and remove the barbs from the two of the hooks on each set. Almost all treble hooks you buy are barbed and this can make unhooking much more difficult than it has to be, especially when they get caught up in your net. The reason for leaving one barbed hook on each treble is so that you can put that hook into your bait, keeping it on for longer. Now take your metal trace material and cut off around 15 inches or 40 centimeters. To attach your first hook to the trace, thread the end through the eye of the hook before threading it through again. Pull it as tight as you can before clipping on your forceps to the end. What we are about to show you is a very secure way to attach a hook to a metal trace. Now spin the forceps around the trace. This twists the tag end tightly and it means that it can't come undone. This technique takes a couple of attempts to master, the aim being to create a neat twisted section. Just be careful not to spin it too frantically or in front of your face, just in case the forceps fly off. Disconnect your forceps and trim the tag close to the end. Now you'll need to attach the second hook. Thread the hook onto the trace, set it apart from the first hook based on the size of your bait. Ideally you want your hooks covering your bait evenly, not just two hooks at one end of it. With the distance between hook decided, Fold back the trace and wrap it around five or so times before passing the end back through the eye of the hook and pull it tight. Now attach a swivel to the other end of the trace in the same way you attached the first hook.
With the trace completed, now take your main line and slide on a float stop. Next, thread your float onto the main line, followed by the inline weight and plastic bead. Finally, tie your main line to the swivel on your trace. We use a blood knot and wrap the line around itself five to seven times before passing it back through the hole created next to the swivel. Once this knot is pulled tight and you've trimmed the tag end, the rig is complete. Now you've set up a float rig, you'll need to attach a bait. Pike are predators and naturally feed on smaller fish such as roach and bream. They've also been known to be cannibalistic so don't be shy of using quite a large bait. I've witnessed smaller pike preying on dragonflies and frogs and I've heard that larger pike will even have a go at ducks or rats or when they're running across the surface so they'll pretty much have a go at anything. The obvious bait to use is a live bait. We've found a small charwell roach to be one of the best baits to use, but do check the laws regarding live baiting in your local area because some places don't allow it. Dead baits are probably the most popular choice for anglers and this is because they're easy to get hold of. You can buy them at either the tackle shop, fish market or grocery store. Our favourite dead baits to use are mackerel as they are really oily and have a strong smell. They are also slightly tougher than other species, so they'll stay attached to your hook for slightly longer. Other good dead baits to try are smelt, herring and lamprey. Take your dead bait of choice and pierce the first hook near the root of the tail. This is normally a firm part of the fish, so the hook will stay in place longer. With softer baits, or when you need to cast at longer range, you can use bait elastic like this to wrap around the bait to stop it falling off or falling apart. Bait elastic isn't really necessary for short range fishing though. There you have a baited rig ready to cast out. This rig is ideal for fishing in both shallow and deep water and can be adjusted by sliding the float stop up or down the main line. Most of the time we'll try and set the bait to sit a foot or two off the lake bed. Doing this has worked well for us but it's really up to you to experiment. Once you've cast your baited rig into the water it's important to keep your eyes on the float. A bite can be identified by the float bombing under the surface, although sometimes it's not so obvious as that. Sometimes the float will just slide across the surface of the water and other times it might lift up and lay flat. But if you see one of those things or see unnatural movement on the float, it's important to strike. Now we like to strike quite early to avoid deep hooking the pike, the longer you leave it, the more chance that the pike has of swallowing the bait and swallowing the hooks, and we don't want that. Once we identify a bite, we reel down all the slack out the line before lifting the rod firmly and setting the hooks. It's so exciting when you hook into a pike. So there's a look at float fishing. Now we're going to discuss another great tactic for pike fishing, and that's by using lures. Lure fishing comes into its own when the pike are actively feeding and when the water clarity is relatively clear. When you've got muddy water then it's harder for the pike to spot your lures. Pike lures come in hundreds of different colours, shapes and sizes and it can be really confusing to know what one to use. These are our favourite types of pike lures. First we have a soft plastic lure with a weight and trebles attached. We'll show you how to rig one of these up later. Next we've got a crank or jerk bait. These have a bill which makes them dive down and create a vibrating action when retrieved. And our third lure of choice is a spinner. These include a blade which spins in the water and are irresistible to the pike. Let's take a look at how to rig up a soft plastic lure for pike fishing. Here I have a 14 cm soft plastic lure with a paddle tail. This will create a great action in the water. You'll need a trace material. This is 40 pound breaking strain. You can get away with using lighter, but having a strong trace allows you to be confident knowing that nothing will break. A crimping tool and wire cutters. Luckily I have this, which has both of these in one tool. A weighted screw in jig head like this. Lastly, you'll need a treble hook, a swivel, a strong quick clip, and a split ring. 
First, clip the split ring onto the lower eye of the weighted jig head screw. Next, you'll need to tie the hook section. Take an 8 inch or 20 centimeter length of the 40 pound trace material. Thread one end through the crimp followed by the treble hook. Then thread it back through the crimp before taking your crimping tool and squeezing it down tightly to secure it in place. Next, you'll need to do the same thing in the other end, but instead attaching it to the split ring. Once it is squeezed down, you can trim the tag end with the wire cutters. Now you need to screw in the jig head into the soft plastic lure like this. Lightly hook one of the hooks on the treble into the underside of the lure and you're nearly done. You need to create a longer trace now that you can tie onto the end of your main line. Take around 15 inches or 40 centimeters of trace material. Thread one end through a crimp before threading the trace through a swivel then back through the crimp. Squeeze tight and do the same thing in the other end, but with the quick clip. Once the tag ends are trimmed, you can now open the quick clip and attach the lure. Tie your mainline to the swivel on the trace and you are ready to start casting. Now you have a trace attached to your line with a quick clip, you can change the lure easily. Our choice of lure fishing rod is either a 9 foot 10 to 40 gram spinning rod or an 8 foot bait caster set up like this. Both will work fine. A 2500 to 4000 size spinning reel loaded with 30 pound braid is what we like to use on the spinning setup. And you can get away with using up to 50 pound braid on the bait caster reel. If you don't want to purchase a specific lure fishing rod and reel setup, then you can get away with just using a short cart rod and reel. Lure fishing is a simple case of casting and retrieving the lure but there are ways to improve your chances of catching. Keep changing the speed of the retrieve and try to work the lure at different depths to find where the pike are sat. Also, a common technique when reeling in a lure is to suddenly stop the lure just for a second or two, as this can tempt the pike to attack. Lure fishing can be an effective tactic as it allows you to pack light and cover a lot of water throughout a day's fishing. It's also probably the most exciting way to catch pike. Once you have caught a pike, you will soon realise that they have pretty sharp teeth, so care has to be taken when unhooking them. We would probably suggest if you haven't been pike fishing before, try and find someone else, a friend or an older angler who has experience with unhooking pike to help you out on your first time. But if you want to give it a go, here is a quick guide for unhooking a pike. A couple of essentials you'll need include a landing net, unhooking mat, a long pair of forceps, and wire cutters. Once you have netted your pike, carefully lift the fish onto the unhooking mat. If it's a large pike, then kneel with your legs either side of the fish. But if it's a smaller one, then you don't have to position yourself like this, as it's not going to be as strong. Keep your eyes out for where the hooks are and be careful to avoid them. The fish's teeth are sharp, but your hooks can cause a lot more damage if they get stuck in your hand. Sometimes the hooks can be on the left side of the mouth, so use the chin grip on the right hand side to avoid them, or vice versa. To get the pike to open its mouth to let you get in there with the forceps, you'll need to locate the main gill cover. There is a smaller gap too, which you can't get your fingers under so easily, but go a bit further down and there is the main gill. Slip your hand under there and slide it up towards the mouth of the fish into the V shape. Staying close to the edge of the gill, avoiding the red gill rakers, you can slip your fingers up to an opening. With your fingers tucked into this opening, clamp your hand against the side of the pike and you should be able to open the fish's mouth up. Remember to avoid the red gill rakers as they are quite sensitive for the pike and also can be rough and graze your skin. You'll see that with your hand in this position, it is away from the teeth and it provides a solid place to grip the pike if it wriggles. With the fish's mouth open, you can now remove the hooks using a long set of forceps. If a fish is very deep hooked, then pull on the trace firmly and try and look inside the pike's mouth to see where those hooks are. If you can't get them out, then also try and seek help from an angler who's about 
And if there's no one about and you're really struggling, then worst case scenario, pull the trace tight and cut as much tackle loose as possible before releasing the pike. Once unhooked, you can hold the fish with the chin grip, but do support the weight of the fish, especially if it's a heavy one with your other hand like this. Release the fish as soon as you can. They can survive for a while out of the water, but don't mess around for any longer than you have to. Our biggest tip for easily unhooking a pike is to simply strike early. The earlier you strike after the float goes under, means that you're just less likely to end up with problems with the pike swallowing your bait. I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. If you'd like to learn more, then feel free to click here for more videos. See you next time.